Hey you guys, this is Janice Wilson Hughes. We're here in my Evolution Stoneware Pottery Studio to talk about some ergonomic issues today. And what I specifically want to talk to you guys about is how I have raised my wheel up on some blocks so that I can stand up while I throw. I've had a bunch of questions lately about how I've approached raising my wheel the height of it compared to my height and some things like that. So I wanted to put together a video and have this out there to hopefully try to help some other people who may be facing some physical issues in their own studio to relieve some of that physical pain with your equipment setup. First, let me answer the question of why would you want to raise your wheel and throw standing up? And there's one big answer to that, and that is to relieve back pain. For me personally, I used to have a lot of lower back pain. I do still struggle with lower back pain, but raising my wheel has helped a great deal with that as far as back pain specifically caused by my studio practices. I raised my wheel up about eight years ago, and for me personally, I would never go back. I do not advocate that this is something that everyone out there, every potter should run out and do, but if you're having back problems and you're more comfortable standing than you are sitting, this is something that you should definitely consider doing in your own space. I also want to be clear that I'm not a medical professional. So I'm sharing with you information about my own personal experience and some general information around ergonomics that I've learned through my former career as well as some things on the internet and from some doctors who I've visited. But if you want expert advice, you should definitely speak to a medical professional about this. So with that being said, and out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this wheel height. Now, first, why would it be more ergonomic to throw standing up? Well, if you're not familiar with spine compression, out of standing, sitting, standing actually compresses your spine the least out of those positions. It might be counterintuitive because you think, oh, well, I'm relaxed when I'm sitting down, but it actually places a fair amount of compression on your vertebra. So for a lot of us with back pain, standing up is actually a lot more comfortable, especially over a long duration of time versus sitting. Now, sitting hunched over is considerably worse than just sitting vertically as well. And also, you know, standing leaning over is worse than standing, but still better than sitting. Well, the height that you want to set your wheel is going to be a personal thing for you. I don't have a particular guideline that's going to be perfect for everybody because this is going to be really specific to your own body as well as your specific physical complaints that you're having with the motions that you carry out while you're throwing. So let me first cover two general bits of information on ergonomics. Now the first thing I want to talk about is neutral positions for your body. So if you stand upright with a little bit of bend in your knees, a little bit of space between your legs and your arms down, this would be a neutral position. But if you're working with your hands while you're standing, what, what would be the neutral position for the height that you want to be working at? Well, that's going to come down to, in ergonomic terms, you want to stand up straight with your shoulders back. And if you just bend your elbows, at a 90 degree angle here at the sides, this distance from the palm of your hand to the floor is going to be 
a good working height. This is a resting height for your hands. And that would be a good height where you might want to have a work table to do alterations, decorating, whatever hand building you might be doing in your studio. And that's also something to think about with what height you're working at on your wheel. But possibly a more important measurement with the wheel is this one. So if you stand, shoulders back, and put your hands out in front of you, just a little bit from your body, with the palms facing down. Now this height is a resting height for extended arms. And what we're talking about here is a position that gives you a good amount of leverage for putting downward force. For working here, it's very hard to apply downward force. Working here, you have your body behind you and you can apply downward force. So, this height here, you'll want to measure that for yourself. This is where I have, by design, set up my wedging table. So that when I wedge, I can get the weight of my body behind me to apply force to the clay. And what I usually do is stand with one foot in front of the other and try to stand up straight, but apply force this way. One thing that I used to do and is natural for most of us is to sort of hunch over while you're wedging or applying downward force. And ergonomically speaking, that's something you want to avoid. So that's something that you could think about being aware of in your own studio practice and perhaps trying to correct. And <laughs> believe me, this is a uh, do as I say, not as I do type of situation. If you see in my videos, I definitely am not in ideal posture at all times. So anyway, for wheel height. Now, arguably for a lot of us, the most physically demanding part of throwing a pot is going to be centering. And that does require a fair amount of downward force. So logically, you might be interested in setting your wheel up at that height that we were just talking about. The standing up straight, hands slightly in front of you, palms down height. And that's what I've done with this wheel. I've matched my wedging table height and set this up at, for me, that height turned out to be 32 and a half inches high. I am five feet, six inches tall. So the way I accomplished raising the wheel is by placing it on some concrete blocks. I got these at home improvement store and thankfully they had some large size ones and a couple of smaller size ones. So with a combination of three different blocks, I was able to get the height that I needed to get my wheel to this height. In contrast, my primary throwing wheel, which is the first one that I raised up, and as I mentioned, this was about eight or nine years ago, I have that one just sitting on two cinder blocks, two concrete blocks, and that was what I had at the time. I raised it to that height, it seemed to work fine, and I just went with it. So over time, that has greatly improved my back pain from throwing. But with that pain sort of relieved, I've become aware of some other ergonomic stresses on my body from my throwing practices. And that's why I decided to set this wheel at a different height and see if it works a little better for me. So you may want to experiment with your own. I'm just sharing this information with you on my experience so that you might be able to more easily hone in on a height that works for you. So, my other wheel, it's only two inches higher. So it's 34 and a half inches high for my 5'6 build, but you'd be surprised how much difference two inches in wheel height makes with your working. So that height is all right for centering and for doing the initial pulls, but as I get to the height of even a normal cup, my hands get to be up here on that other wheel. And so I tend to raise my shoulders. And what I've been running into is a fair amount of shoulder pain that's 
a buildup of a combination of ergonomic factors throughout my life from my former desk job and things like that. But at any rate, my throwing practices are aggravating that and is something that I would like to resolve. So that is part of my motivation in lowering this wheel so that at a sort of nominal regular height, I don't have to hunch up as much to work at this height. So the first factor that you want to think about in choosing a height to raise your wheel to is going to be basically your height and your reach. So that's going to work to set you up for a basic safe height for lower back and arm usage. But beyond that, you need to think about what other physical complaints do you have when you're working out your wheel? What hurts after a long day in the studio? So for some people that might be an elbow. For me, the shoulder, maybe some wrist factors. So there are going to be other things that you'll want to think about in how you can set up the height so that the movements that you'll be doing with the pots that you throw, the way that you move at the wheel, will be keeping your body in a neutral position as much as possible. So that may require some experimentation, but don't worry about it. Start with the lower back height and then work from there. Now let's talk a tiny bit about the position of my body when I'm throwing. Now what I'm working on getting used to when I'm centering is to stand with one leg forward, for me, my right leg, my left leg back a little bit, knees bent, shoulders as upright as I can be, so trying not to have a lot of bend in my back, and then applying downward force here for centering. Unfortunately, there are going to be times where you'll be leaning over or bending one way or the other. I can't figure out any way to get around that. Unfortunately, we don't have any kind of mechanism that has a continually adjustable height as we're throwing to raise and lower the wheel depending on what activity we're doing. But when you're doing your pulls, think about having your arms as much as you can in a neutral position. One thing that I do with my throwing wheel is I have it a few feet from the wall and I have a large mirror in front of it. So I can as I'm working over top of a pot, I can look up and see the full profile of what I'm working on in the mirror in front of me. So that helps a lot with this type of situation where you're trying to see what the curves are in your pot. Not saying that you'll completely get out of that, but the mirror really helps. Another thing you can do is place your water to the left side. So most of us throw with our right hand on the outside of the pot. So you're naturally going to be leaning over this way some while you're throwing. If you put your water on the opposite side, when you go to get water, you'll be shifting back to the left and balancing out some of that lean. So you're not always leaning one way and compressing this side and stretching this side. Another important practice is remembering to take breaks while you're throwing. So whether you're standing or sitting, every pod or every other pod or every five or ten minutes, you want to move around. So get away from the wheel, at least take a few steps, maybe walk around the studio a little bit. Just do some stretching, unwind your body a little bit, and then resume your activities. At the end of the day, a good stretching regimen is also something I would recommend. And outside of the upper body, hand, shoulder, back type stretches, I would also really encourage you to do some hamstring stretches. If you're having lower back problems, if your hamstrings get really tight, it is a big contributor to tightening up your back muscles and causing back pain. So. Hamstring stretches are important, and there are a lot of different ways that you can approach that. To a lot of you guys, my wheel probably looks a little different than what you're used to seeing. I am 
not being compensated by Shimpo, but I will go ahead and tell you this is a Shimpo RK Whisper wheel. Now, you may have heard of the VL Whisper, which looks more like a standard Brent or Pacifica type wheel that a lot of people are used to. This one has a different old school design with this really solid body here, but it's not an, an old school 30 year old wheel like it might look like. This is actually a really, really nice, really quiet wheel. So right there, it's at full speed. And I'd be surprised if the sound shows up very much on the video at all. It's extremely quiet. Now, the reason I want to talk to you about it though is this design with this solid metal casing around the body comes with an integrated foot pedal. So the foot pedal is attached into the side of the wheel here. It doesn't come off. It's not attached by a cord like wheels that most people are used to. The really great thing about that for using this as a standing wheel is that it comes with this sort of lever or gear shifter that attaches to that pedal. And so while I'm throwing, I can very easily reach over and change the speed of my wheel with my hand. And I find that personally a lot easier than using a foot pedal. So if you do not yet have your own wheel, and are planning to get one and use it in a standing position, or if you're planning to get an additional wheel to what you already have, you might want to consider a wheel of this style because this hand lever is fantastic when you're throwing standing up. I know that this has been long and a lot of me talking here, but I really, truly, genuinely hope that this might help some of you guys out there who are experiencing physical pain from the work that you're doing in your studio so that you can have some relief. Pain really sucks and it can be very difficult to deal with on a lot of different levels, emotional, psychological, and physical. So I hope that this will help. If you have questions or other ideas or suggestions, please feel free to email me or Connect with me on Facebook, send me a message or post on my Facebook page, which is Evolution Stoneware Pottery. You can also leave comments here on YouTube. I apologize, it, sometimes the notifications for those comments slip past me and I don't see them, so I'm a little bit slow to respond here directly on YouTube sometimes, but I do my best. Thank you guys for watching. I really, truly hope it helps, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. If you're into ceramics, please check out my DVDs and instant video downloads that are available on Amazon. All you have to do is search my name, Janice Wilson Hughes, and they'll pop right up. I think you'll really get a lot out of them. I'd love to be friends with you on Facebook. If you'd like to connect, just head over to my page, which is Evolution Stoneware. And if you'd like to know when I upload new YouTube videos, just subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notification. Thanks. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye. If you appreciate these free videos that I put together for you guys, please consider making a small donation to my channel. I would really honestly appreciate it more than you guys could probably imagine.